baptized in water and they have no clue why and they don't know what's going on but i'm going to give you a little insight as to what is going on so um let's go to exodus chapter 14 okay and uh, if you if you have your Bible, that's great. If you don't, well, then you can read it back here. I hope that you can see it. And uh, we're gonna we're gonna find out some good stuff. Let me just start by saying this: I I wanted to take some time this morning to spend some time in the Word because it's important that people know what's going on when they get baptized in water. I don't know what's going on up here, but it didn't seem to want to do what it said it was going to do. But if you uh, if you uh, have your Bible, read along with me. If this thing comes on fine, if it don't, too bad. The Bible says in Exodus 14, it says this, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel that they turn and encamp by, boy, that's a hard word to say, somewhere over there, between Megdog and the sea, over against Balzaphon, <laughs> before it shall ye encamp by the sea, for Pharaoh will say of the children of Israel, they are entangled in the land, and the wilderness has shut them in. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart, that he shall follow after them. And, he, and I will be honored upon Pharaoh and upon the, his host, that the Egyptians may know that I am the Lord, and that they did so, and they did so. And it was told of the king of Egypt that the people fled, and the heart of Pharaoh of his servants were turned against the people and they said, "We have done this that we have let we have uh, done this that we have let Israel go from serving us, uh, serving us." And he he made ready his chariots and took his people with him. And he took six hundred chosen chariots, and all of the chariots of Egypt and the captains over every one of them. And the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and he pursued after the children of Israel. And the children of Israel went out with a high hand, but the Egyptians pursued after them all the horses and chariots of Pharaoh and his horsemen and his army and overtook them and encamped uh, by the sea by, there it is again. Anyway, they're encamped by the sea. There you go. There you can see it. What I want to start today with, and I wanted to read this to you because this is an important thing that you need to know in uh, what's going on in uh, as as we walk with the Lord. There was three. There was three operations in Scripture, and you need to know this. And all three of them are going to be fulfilled in your life personally. That was Passover, Pentecost, Tabernacle, because these are all in Exodus chapter, uh, all in the Exodus here. And I want you to start by understanding this. The the whole thing is these guys were already coming out of Egypt, okay? Everybody say they were born again. They were born again. How many of you know when you come out of Egypt, and you, you come out from under the bondage of Satan, that is Pharaoh as in type, and you come out of the world, that's Egypt as a type, you come into a new dimension, and you follow Moses, and he's taking you out of the land of Egypt into the promised land, and the Bible says that in this process of coming out, they had to cross the Red Sea. Red Sea is a type of water baptism. But let me explain to you what I want you to understand. When you come out of Egypt, you got born again. That's the type, okay? Everybody say, that's the type. That's what happened. You got born again. You got, this is the deal. When you get baptized in water today, there's a couple of questions I'm going to ask you. It's important that you know what you're doing. You understand what I'm saying? They, they'd already been delivered by the blood. That's what happened in Exodus chapter 12. He said, when I see the blood, I will do what? I'll pass over you. They were already delivered by the blood. They're going out and they're going for their, they're going into their promised land. But the problem is they had the Red Sea between them and the promised land. And God says, okay, that's the way you got to go. Everybody, everybody needs to understand there's three uh, that agree in one on this planet. It's the blood, the water, and the spirit. You can read about that in 1 John, I think it's chapter 4 or 5. I don't remember for sure, but you need to understand that there's, did you know the Bible says in Ecclesiastes 4 and 12, I believe it is, the Bible says that a threefold cord is not quickly broken. Did you hear me? It, it's just, how many did he say agree in one? Spirit, blood, water. It's three, right? Isn't that amazing? There's three that agree in one on the planet. And he goes, you know what? A threefold cord is not quickly broken. Now, how many of you know that the only one that can separate you between, the only one that can bring separation between you and God is you? Because God's not going to turn his back on you. Do you know that? Never would, never in a million years would he turn his back on you, ever. You know, I was praying last night. I was laying in bed and 
And I just felt like the Lord was telling me, he said, you know what I want you to do? And I said, okay, what's that? He said, I just want you to, from now on, quit worrying about everything else. Quit worrying about everybody else. How many of you know it's easy to worry about somebody else? Did you know it's easy to point your finger at somebody else? Quit doing it. Just stop. He said, I want you to know that it's not about everybody else. It's about me and you. Right? It's just about me and you. That's it. He said, I want you to do me a favor. He said, well, better than that, do yourself a favor. He said, just do this. When you come to the church and you want to pray, he said, all I require of you, did you know Christianity is pretty simple, really? It's not a lot of requirements. You know, if you're a Muslim, you got to do all kinds of goofy garbage. But if you're a Christian, God did it all. All you have to do is be obedient and respond. And he told me, he said, you know what I want you to do? He said, I want you to just do these three, just do these two things and use these couple words and you're going to change people's lives and you're going to be changed first. How many of you know you got to get changed before you can change somebody? You can't help anybody unless you get help. So I, I begin to think, okay, I'm going to do this. And you know what his words were to me? He said, <clears throat> he said, all I want you to do is just say, you know what? I know you love me, Father, and I love you. That's all that he required of me. And he said, I want you just to walk the floor <clears throat> and just simply say, I love you, Father, and I know you love me. I love you, Father, and I know you. And he said, it's going to change your world. It's going to change the dynamic. And it's going to do great things because all of a sudden, it's not about everybody else. It's about me and you. How many of you know Jesus came to have a relationship with you? He didn't come to have a relationship with the church as much as he does, but you make up the church. You do. But I said all that to say this. He wants the relationship between me and you or between me and him in order that we can have a relationship between me and you. Did you know that, did, you may not know this, I know I'm not on water baptism yet, but hang on. Did you know that it's very, very important to God Almighty, to the Almighty God, the relationship we have between each other. Did you know the Bible says if you say you love God and you hate your brother, you're a liar. How you like that? That's pretty stout. I didn't say that. That's in the Bible. He said, oh, you say, oh, God, I love you, but you hate your brother. You're a liar. He said, because you can't say you love your brother. Or you can't say you hate your brother and love me. It is not possible. Impossible. You know, I hear all the time, and I understand. How many of you know humans are made up of emotions? Well, that was weak. You don't have no emotions out there? Humans are made up of emotions. They have intellect, emotions, and will. Intellect, whatever it is. And your emotions a lot of times drive your life. Did you know that? That's unfortunate, but it's true. Well, he hurt me. So your emotions say, get even. Now, tell me I'm lying. I'm not lying to you. You know what it's like. You live this life. You know what I'm talking about. Well, so-and-so hurt me. I hate that dude. You know, somebody, yesterday I was standing right over here. I was unloading some stuff, and somebody come driving through here, and I said, hey, Lord, I want you to make them understand. How many of you know, let me, let me back up and say that. Did you know the Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so? So I said, you know, well, I'm going to start saying so, right? I said, this old gentleman, he, he come driving by and said, Lord, you get him. I'm saying so right now. You get him, you save him, and you show him your glory, and you do powerful work in him where he can always know there is a God in Israel. You know what I'm saying? Just keep, just keep talking. Anyway, how many are you glad you've been delivered from Egypt? Come on. Uh, the type is this. You've been delivered from Egypt. That's the world. Pharaoh has his thumb on you when you were there, but all of a sudden Pharaoh lost his grip on you. By the blood of the lamb, you come out of Israel, right? Or you come out of Egypt, and now you're on your way into something different, but you got a problem. I want you to understand there's a separation between born again and water baptism. You need both. Do you know what 1 Corinthians chapter 10 said? He said this. He said, I wouldn't have you ignorant, brother. And he said, all of our fathers were delivered by the blood, the water, and the spirit, if you will. He said, all of them were baptized in the cloud, and all of them were baptized in the sea. All of them. 
So why do you think you're better than the next guy? If you've been born again and you've never been baptized in water, shame on you. You need to be baptized in water. Me and Wayne were talking about that the other day. He said, do you sprinkle people? I said, you know what? If their heart's right, I'll sprinkle them. I don't care. I'll spray them with a hose. Put them in the shower, whatever it takes. Right? But generally, you know, baptism, if you read Romans 6, which we might get there, I don't know. But the Romans chapter 6 is a description of your baptism. It's when Jesus said this. He said, you were buried with me in baptism and you rose again when I come up. So when you go down in that water, it's like being buried. Everybody say buried. That's what baptism is. It's being buried. You're literally going down and coming up. So you know what? The way he describes it, you're dead. Right? How many of you just sprinkle dead bodies? And just throw them out there and sprinkle them? No, you bury them. If you're literally dead with Christ, you bury them. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to put you clear underwater. You say, please don't hold me down too long. Vaughn's big enough, he just beat his way out. It don't bother him. He, he get up. And that's not the point. The point is, it's an obedience. You're doing what Bible says. You know what Peter said? He said this. He said, repent. Everybody say repent. And be baptized. Right? If you read 1 Peter chapter, what is it, 4 or 5? I don't remember. I just read it. It might be in here on my computer here, but it says this. He said, and he's talking about the flood of Noah. How many of you know there was only eight people saved, but it was a type of water baptism. God delivered them through water. Let me explain to you something. See, when you come out of Egypt, you come to the Red Sea, and then all of a sudden something changes. You're going, God, what are we going to do now? Let me explain to you something. God was drawing Pharaoh out. How many of you got born again? The devil didn't like it. Can you hear me? The next step is, he's mad. Let me give you what happened. You can read here in Exodus 14. He's mad. He's upset. He's saying, you know, let's go get these people to drag them back into the bondage. But the problem is, God had a plan. How many of you know you get born again and the devil's want to take you down? But God's got a plan. It's called water baptism. Did you know what Romans chapter 6 said? He said, sin shall no longer have dominion over you. Let me explain that to you. The Bible says that because he's trying to communicate to you that the dominion of sin, whatever you used to be under bondage to in water baptism will be broke off and you'll be free of it. Let me explain it this way. When they got to the Red Sea and, and God's drawn the Egyptians in, he goes, man, they got 600 best chariots. He said, we're going to go get them and drag them back. The problem is they had to deal with God. So he gets him to the Red Sea, and, and Moses, I love the way this is written. He said, Moses, you can read all this. Moses cried to God, God, what are we going to do? And he goes, and I love this. He says, what are you crying to me for? How many of you know that sometimes God's looking and saying, what are you crying to me for? You do it. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. What are you, what are you mumbling and whining and crying about? You take care of it. So Moses grabbed his stick, and he goes, okay, God. And he waved his stick over the sea. The Bible says a strong east wind all night long blew over the Red Sea. Somebody saying, yeah, but it was only a foot and a half deep. Let me, let me ask you a question. How would they drown 600 chariots and all their men in a foot and a half of water? It's a bunch of garbage. I mean, that's a miracle. No, it was 600 feet deep. And God calls the strongest wind. Now get this. The Bible says that when they were going across, and this is a preach. The Bible says they're going across. This is water baptism. Remember, the Bible said when they're going across, there's a wall on the right and a wall on the other. How many of you know water baptism is a protection? Uh, you, you're so excited. I'm, I'm not sure that you're here. It's a protection. It's something powerful going on. Right? They crossed the Red Sea on dry land. And guess what happened? God's drawing the enemy in. He's going, oh, they're crossing on dry land. Well, we probably can too. What a bunch of fools, huh? And so they just jump off in the water, this dry land. And they jump off with them. And the Egyptians are following in. And just as the, the Israelites come out the other side, God says, okay, it's time. And the Bible says the walls collapsed on the Egyptians. 
Now, this is what I want you to hear. The Bible says when the water collapsed on the Egyptians and the Israelites were on the other side of the water, they had been baptized in water, as it were. The Bible says that they looked and they saw the Egyptians floating on the water. And guess what it says after that? The Bible says they never saw them again. That's what I'm talking about. The dominion of sin is broken. All of a sudden, now you've come into a new dimension. You were born again, but now you got baptized in water, and it's a whole new dimension of God moving in your life. Somebody should have got happy right there. It's an amazing operation of God. He's bringing you out of one stage into another stage, and the next stage is your enemy's completely destroyed. Sin is completely broken off of you. Somebody says, you mean I won't sin no more? I'm not telling you that. I'm just telling you the dominion, that thing that had his thumb on you that would drive you. How many of you know what it means to be driven? How many of you know what it means to be addicted? (laughs) Nobody? Why, y'all are really some kind of Christian. Thank you, Rick. You're just like me. Did you know sugar's cocaine? It's just like cocaine. I snort it every morning. I'm just kidding you, but it is. It's addicting, right? Come on, is it addicting or not? You know, I was telling Kelly yesterday, I said, you know what? There have been times in my life where I just looked at people and say, you're a baby. Shake it off. But then all of a sudden I woke up to the fact that I'm just like they are. Come on. Kelly asked me, why don't you go without sugar for a week? I said, I have compassion on the addicted. Come on. I have compassion on the addict. How many of you know I have compassion? I seriously mean that. I have compassion on them. Because it isn't an easy thing. She goes, well, you know, I know people, they're not even Christians. They just quit drinking. Thank God. I'm glad they did. It's all good, right? How come I only get a couple of okays? It's a good thing. I'm glad they did. I mean that. And they're way tougher than me. Somebody come to me and they said, you know what? You better cut sugar out. You're going to die. I don't know whether I'd cut it out or die. What would you do? But I'm trying to make a point here. That thing that drives you, right? See, it sounds like I'm double talking because the thing that drives you is broken. So if you want to be free from sugar, I believe you could be. My problem is I'm not sure I want to, Yvonne. Right? And that's the problem with a lot of people. They're not sure they want to, so they continue, right? Why are y'all just looking at me like, well, I don't know about you. I'm giving you the truth. I know what I live with myself. I know what it's like. But I'm trying to make a point here. You come out of Egypt, and I realize that that don't mean Egypt came out of you. That doesn't mean that all of, because they got into the land. They got as, as far as they got, and they said, Moses, they drug us all out here. And, you know, let's just go back to Egypt. We'd like to have the leeks and the garlics and this, this, and then that. How many of you know there's a difference between you coming out of Egypt and Egypt coming out of you? Big deal. It's a big deal. Am I right? Yeah. But I'm going to tell you something. It's an important step in your Christianity. Listen to me. If you've been born again and you've not been baptized in water, this is your day. This is your day. You need to get baptized in that water. You say, why? Because it's obedience. It's a a thing that everybody else did it. Why are you above it? Repent and be baptized. Let's do it together. Repent and be baptized. Well, I'm I'm pretty, I'm kind of shy. Get over it. You need to be obedient, right? Well, I don't want to put no shorts on. Don't put them on then. Wear a suit. It's okay. Right? How many of you know a suit will dry out? You say, well, it might shrink. So what? Go buy another one. If it shrinks, tell me and we'll buy it for you. Well, I, I don't know. My hair will get messed up. People have never seen you with your hair messed up. Come on, really? Yeah, they have. Don't lie to me. Better yet, if you don't like that, shave your head. You ain't got to worry about it no more, huh? I think I'll just let my hair go wild. What do you think? My hair's wild all the time. I don't care. 
Let me tell you what happens. See, let me, let me just give you this. You need to be born again because you can't get born, you can't get baptized in water. It don't do you no good. Repent. How many of you know that's in order, right? Repent and be baptized. What happened here? They came out of Egypt, then they got baptized in water. There's, there's a, what's a progression? It's an order that we do it in, right? If you think you can just get baptized in water without repentance, you got it all wrong. But if you've repented, you need to be baptized in water. I, I mean, there is miles of stuff I could preach on this. I just don't have time. You know, I told myself this morning, this is not fair. People want to get baptized in water and they want to know what they're doing. I don't have time to give it to them in 30 minutes. It's a lot of stuff. But just remember, the important thing is you're being obedient. Okay? You're being obedient. You're doing it God's way. And if all of our fathers were, why not you? Right? That's right. I was seriously thinking about letting Rick baptize me. Yeah, see, he liking that. He hugged it even with you today. <laughs> no, we won't do that. I'm just kidding. But no, seriously. Have you been baptized in water? Did you know what you did when you did? Or did you just do it because somebody told you you ought to be? You need to know why you did it, and you need to know what it's going to do for you. And that's why I gave you those two little points. It's going to break this dominion of sin off of your life because it's going to draw the enemy in, and God's going to drown him in the water. How many of you know the greatest enemy you have that gets drowned in the water is the guy you look at in the mirror every day? Did you know I am my own worst enemy? I always blame Russell for a lot, but he is not, he's not my problem. I'm telling you, he just ain't my problem. You know, a lot of people, they just don't have enough guts to look in the mirror and say, you know what? You need help. How many of you know I need help? Just like you need help. All of us need help, right? One of the way God helps us is in water baptism. Truly, he does. So today, listen to me, I'm going to quit. I know, what time is it? I got 10 minutes. We got to eat, and then we got to go baptize you. Somebody says, you should not swim after you. We're not swimming. We're going to be baptizing folks. If you start swimming, Ron, we're going to be going, what in the world happened here? And that thing ain't big enough to swim anyway. Listen, the, <laughs> this is the deal. This is the deal. We, we, you know, I'm going to ask you a few questions. I want you to think about what I'm going to say to you right now because these questions are critical. It's not something that you take lightly and just blow off because you're there and you feel obligated. If you feel obligated about any of this stuff, don't even do it. It's like when we take communion. If you feel obligated, you shouldn't be taking it. It's something you do because you love it and you want to. So when we get down there, and you're standing in the water, in Vaughn's case, it'll be to his ankles. In my case, it'll be to my knees. Right? I know I'm picking on Vaughn, but that's just fun. Let me explain to you what's going on. I'll say, listen, and how many of you know that you need witnesses? I don't want to baptize you in my bathtub, just you and me. No, I want witnesses there to verify what happened. To, to, you know, the, like the great cloud of witnesses. I'm watching. How many of you know when you do this in front of witnesses, that's why you get married in front of witnesses, right? That's the whole point. You need a couple of folks that will verify what you did, right? When you get baptized in water, that's why the Bible says, if you deny me before men, I'm going to deny you, you know, I'll deny you. So the first thing we're going to do is you're standing in there in water, and I'm going to say, you know what? I got a question for you. Think about it. I'm going to say, have you been born again? And you're either going to say yes or no. If you say no, I'll just say, okay, jump out of the water. I'm not going to do you no good today. Are you listening? If you say yes, I'll say, okay, I want you to confess with your mouth, Jesus Christ, to these people. Say, I've been born again. Jesus is my Savior. That's all you're... That's, what does the Bible say? To believe in your heart 
and confess with your mouth. I am not, I didn't say it. The Bible did. Right? That's the first question. That's the biggest question. Have you been born again? If you say, I don't know, you need help. We better go back and start over. Either you say yes or you say no because there ain't no gray area. You either know or you don't. If you ask me, have you been born again? I'll come right straight back with you and I'll say, yes, sir. Because I know. I know. Let me explain to you something. If you don't know and you just say, Jesus is my Lord and my Savior, and you confess that with your mouth and you believe it in your heart, that fast. Things change in your life. That, that's the simplicity of the gospel, people. It don't take, it's not hard. You don't have to light candles and do backflips. All you have to do is believe and confess. It's not hard. But the important part is there, when I ask you, I want you to say it with your mouth where folks can hear you. You know, I love to go to weddings and you say, will you take so-and-so to be your lovely, beloved, whatever, however they go, you know, to be your beloved husband or wife? And they go, yes. Whoa, come on, speak up. Let the people hear you. Do you take Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Yes. No, say yes, I do, I will. Say, so you don't have to scream at us. We got it. I'm just trying to make a point here. How many of you know there's a difference between, but I don't know how to communicate this. There's a difference between just the opening your mouth and saying something and thinking something. Right? What does the Bible say? Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Does that mean you open your mouth and your tongue moves and something comes out, right? It's not something you thought. You may have thought it, but it comes out of your mouth. Right? That's what we're going to do today. Right? All right. Are you ready? Okay. Did you bring some clothes? Okay. You know, the rule in our church is you got to be under three minutes. I'm playing with you. I'm just messing with your brain. Listen, somebody says, how are you going to baptize him in the name of Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, or in Jesus' name only? You know what? I'll baptize you in all five of them. Just as long as Jesus, Father, Son, Holy... Somebody! Say, so you mean you don't, have a, you don't have a set way to do things? I want your obedience. I want to see God move in your life. And obedience is important more than what I say. Okay? When I baptize you this way, I'm hoping that Rick will help me because I don't do this. I can't do it alone. I don't know if he will. If he don't, Russell's going to. Okay, see. He's got a plan, so be ready. No. We're gonna, we're, I just want you to understand. Listen. This is the greatest day of your life other than being born again. You get baptized in water, man. It's awesome. You know, the last we did a baptism years ago, and I know I got off of one subject onto another, but we got a baptism going on down years ago. Me and a fellow named Butch Barker, we were down there in, at the uh, pool down there at, uh, Trux, or the, in, at, at Crozier, the big pool there. And I remember we were baptized some of these native ladies, and they were way bigger than I was. And we'd baptize them, and they'd go limp, and I'm going, God, help us. I'm not kidding. They'd go limp, dude. Like, well, yeah, we're going to drown. But they didn't know what they were doing. They didn't know they went limp. And we're floating them over to the edge. And we get them and we floated them over to the edge and we'd roll them off of the edge into the dirt and the grass. And they just lay there. We roll three or four of them right on top of each other, right over there in the dirt. In the grass, I mean. But it was powerful. So I'd never seen that before. Well, I'm sorry, I did. But water baptism is important. Everybody say this with me one more time. Repent. I was too shy. Repent and be baptized. 
Who said that? Peter, the apostle Peter said, repent and be baptized. So we're going to do what Peter said, right? You know, the Bible says, I was reading it this morning. The Bible says, I believe it's in uh, one of the gospels. I don't remember for sure. The Bible says that, you know, Jesus came and the uh, John the Baptist was baptizing people unto repentance, Right? That's what it says. And he said, there's one coming after me that's not going to just baptize you in the water. He's going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost. Well, that's a whole other message. And there was a distinction between the two, water and, and spirit. But today we're talking about water. And I want you to know I'm so happy for you. I mean that. I mean it. And so when we get down there, it's only what? What is it, three miles down the road? And uh, we'll do the business, and uh, you can either come back up here and, and sit and visit with us for a while, or you can go home. I don't care what you do. But I want as many people as will go down there to be a witness to what's happening, okay? How many of you agree? All right? It's a good thing. So why don't you uh, stand on your feet?